What's going on guys? Welcome to Fishing POV. Today we're going to show you how to winterize an outboard. This is a 60 horse mercury outboard four stroke. Um, just going just to give you the basics. You guys are going to have to go search, you know, whatever oils or lubricants, stuff like that, that you need that's going to be good for your um, outboard motor. And of course, the sizes of the tools that you're going to need as well. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to put the muffs on the bottom, get this thing fired up and get the oil nice and hot so that it runs out nice and smooth and we can get as much of it out as possible. So you want to make sure that the muffs are covering all your holes right here on both sides. Get the water turned on. Good to go. probably want to let it run for maybe 10 good 15 minutes or so um, another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the outboard up and down to drain as much of the water out as possible all right guys so we got the outboard warmed up enough for the oil to come out nice and easy one thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start the engine back up and we're going to fog the engine now most of the time when you fog the engine what it does is it'll bog it down enough for the engine to die. Um, we've done this several times with this engine and it does not die, but the smoke will start coming out of the exhaust pretty good and you know that it's actually working. Um, this is a precautionary to lube all the inner parts of your outboard motor. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, so I just want to show you guys um, where the intake is, where you're going to spray the fogging fluid on our particular outboard. Right down in there, that's your intake. That's where you're going to spray your fogging fluid. Um, spray it and watch the smoke come out. Um, give it a good, good douse. It's going to get kind of wet in there. It's going to start dripping out of that, but uh, you'll be able to clean that up and get it going but you want it to you know you want it to fog out and everything you want the smoke coming out of your exhaust and everything real good and then you can if it doesn't shut down on its own um, do that maybe for about three to four minutes or so to where the fog, the smoke is coming out real good and then uh, go ahead and shut it down on your own All right, so just so you guys know, every outboard is different. Um, didn't see a whole lot of smoke coming out of this one, but you can hear it as it was trying to bog down. That fluid is getting in there and um, lubricating the parts inside your outboard. Make sure when that fogging fluid drips around inside there that you get that stuff cleaned up as well as good as possible. All right guys, so now we're gonna change the oil. Right here is your drain plug. For this particular outboard, it is a 18 millimeter socket wrench. A um, couple other tools you're gonna need is your oil filter wrench that goes on your socket as well. Um, maybe different for your outboard. Funnel, oil filter, whichever one works for your outboard and some oil, we're using full synthetic, and this is 25W-40. This particular uh, outboard takes three quarts, maybe a hair over, um, with the oil filter. 
So we're gonna get uh, get started with this here. First thing you wanna do is take the top off. As you guys see right here is the oil filter. Um, then you wanna take the drain plug out, but before that, what you wanna do is you wanna position the outboard. So you wanna bring it up a little bit like this. And as you can see, there's a little lip right here. And this lip um, allows it to drain past most of the bottom part of your outboard here, your lower unit. So we're going to go ahead and turn that, Eric. All right, that's good right there. You want to position your oil pan here to just hit underneath that. And then you want to take that plug out. Always wear protection, guys. Just saying. And be careful because it comes out quick when it's hot. All right, now that you got a nice, just a little steady drip like this, you can go ahead and put that plug back on. Make sure it's turning nice and easy in there. If it's not, back out and start over. You don't want to cross those threads. That'll cost a lot of money to fix. Before you tighten it down, go ahead and clean up everything inside there. Just hand tighten it. Don't wrench it down too hard. You don't want to strip it in there or anything like that. So. Keep your oil pan handy. Make sure to clean up any oil that you can mix with the water. It's very slippery. You don't want to fall. Okay, if you want to turn that around for me. No matter what you do, the oil is going to come out and start dripping inside here. Nothing you can do about that. So what I like to do is I like to take some paper towel and stuff it down in there to hopefully catch as much as possible. All right, guys, so let's get this oil filter off. So I got this type of oil filter wrench right here. You guys can see that. Just works easy because you can get it right on the outside edge. because that's a pretty snug fit in there. Some of the other oil filters really didn't work very well. So let's go ahead and get a close up of this. See, and there's really nothing you can do that's going to get in there no matter what. All right. Get your new oil filter. Quicksilver. Um, equivalent to Mercury products. Get a little bit of oil. Put it around the gasket. Don't need a lot, just a little tiny bit. Just that little tiny bit that's on the glove there. It's really all you need, just enough to moisten it a little bit. Again, you don't want to cross thread this. Make sure it's going on nice and easy. Should have, you know, it should have a while to go before you get start to have to tighten it. So as long as it's going nice and easy, you're good. 
Okay. It's on there, fairly decent. Get another paper towel here, just kind of wipe a little bit of oil that was on my glove off so we can tighten this down. I'm gonna tighten it down by hand. I'm gonna take this glove off of that. So, wipe my hands off real good and just try to give it one more good solid turn. And that right there should actually be pretty good. Start tearing your dirty towels out. And that makes it a lot easier. Get in there and start wiping up some of that oil that you missed with the paper towels. Okay, so your oil fill is right here. You guys can see that. We're gonna start off with, start off with just a couple quarts. And then we'll keep checking it, let it sit and keep checking it. that in there got a crack in the tubing so we're gonna get a different funnel check it here just to make sure it's reading on the dipstick it's in between the hash marks right now about a quart low and we have almost a quart left so we'll go ahead and put the rest of this in and that should be good on the oil change. Okay guys, don't be alarmed if it shows a little bit high um, once you put all that in because actually once you start it, what's gonna happen, it's gonna start cycling it through the engine and it's gonna fill up that uh, oil filter as well. So right now it's reading a little bit high, but don't be alarmed with that. If you wanna get a good check, what you can do is put the muffs back on Start it up, let it run for like just literally a, a second or two, and then uh, it'll start bringing that oil, circulating it throughout the engine, and then you can let it sit, and then you can get a good solid check on it to make sure that it's not overfilled or anything like that, or underfilled. It shouldn't be underfilled. Um, make sure you check your owner's manual. Usually will tell you how many quarts that it'll take, and try to go by that. Make sure you guys clean up after yourselves. Clean up any oil that you can get to. Um, sometimes you can't get to all of it, but clean it up the best that you can. All right, guys, so make sure that you get your oil fill cap back on. Again, you don't want to strip that off. It should be, should go on pretty easy. And you're good to go. Your oil change is done. Now we're going to change the gear lube, the lower unit lube. Um, this is very important to do before winter, especially if you live in an area, um, a freezing climate type area. Um, you don't want to crack that lower unit just in case any water gets in there whatsoever that freezes and expands and cracks that lower unit and that's a very expensive thing to fix. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that gear lube down at the bottom as well. All right guys, so now we're going to replace the lube in the lower unit here. Um, I'm using Quicksilver High Performance Gear Lube, um, SAE 90 weight. You're gonna need a pretty big flat end, um, flathead screwdriver for these, you got vent, two vent plugs here. Um, you got a front and a back vent plug, and then you have your drain plug down at the bottom. Got some extra uh, washers here for the vent plugs and the drain plug, just in case those are bad. So what we're gonna do, uh, actually I plugged up these two little holes here too, just in case these um, the plugs fall down in there, they don't fall in the hole as well. Not a whole lot of gear lube comes out of here, so it's not gonna overflow or anything. So keep that in mind if you have big drain holes here, you don't wanna lose your plugs inside there. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to take out the bottom plug first. Now 
And as you can see, it's coming out, but it's coming out very slow. The reason for that is because you have your two vent plugs still in. That is the rear vent plug. And now you can see it's coming out quite a bit quicker. And here's your front vent plug. Now the front vent plug left the washer in there. So I may have to get a tool to get that out. There we go. All right, now you just let this drain. Um, it was warmed up. It sat for a little while, so it's not as warm now, so it's not gonna drain as quick as the oil did. So just sit and let it drain for a little bit and then we'll get back to filling it back up. All right, so this is starting to slow down as far as draining out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around to the other side and bring it down a little bit. All right, guys, while you're waiting for your lower unit um, gear lube to drain, what you can do is you can do some other general maintenance stuff um, to close it down for winter as well. And this is stuff that you should be doing throughout the year um, regardless, so it shouldn't need too much, but grease up some of your pivot points that have the Zyrtec fittings in them. Um, you have your swivel point right here on the other side, you have a Zyrtec fitting in there, and you can get yourself a little grease gun like this, and then you can grease that up. What you do is you pump it in until you start seeing the grease come out a little bit, um, and then you stop pretty much. And then you clean up that grease where it's starting to come out. Normally for the pivot point, it comes out at the top. Clean up some of that. Um, you won't be able to get it all, but clean up some of it. Otherwise, you're gonna have grease all over yourself whenever you're doing anything around your um, outboard here. Also, you have your tilt point, which is right here. And on the front side of the tilt point, there's also a Zyrtec fitting, at least on our outboard there is. And you fill that up as well. And then you watch it coming out of either end, this side and on that side and you clean that up once it comes out of either end and then it's nice and full. So make sure you guys do that as well um, while you're waiting here um, for your gear lube oil to drain out. All right guys, so we got pretty much a drip coming out right now. Um, we're gonna go ahead and come around and push this thing back up. Just enough to get under here clean it up a little bit. So this thing is kind of a pain. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it off right now. You want to unscrew the top. That right there screws into that bottom fitting there. There we go. Turning the hose didn't work. So I started turning the little yellow thing right in here that worked a little better i'm going to clean my hands up really quick so they're not all full of oil or lube okay i'm going to bring bring the motor down just a little bit more make sure you have your plugs ready to go. Make sure they got good washers on them. And if you want to get a close up of this, and this is your front plug. Once it starts to come out of the front plug here, we're going to plug that up and then keep pumping until it starts coming out of the rear plug. The funny thing is, is it's actually coming out of the rear plug first. We're going to go ahead and lift this thing up a little bit. OK, 
Okay. Well, normally, like I said, it's supposed to come out of that front plug first, but it is not. So since it's coming out of the rear plug first, we're going to go ahead and plug that up. Can't stress enough, guys, when you're putting in a plug or tightening something down or anything like that, putting something in with threads, you always want to make sure that it starts off real nice and easy. And then slowly gets harder because if it's hard right off the bat, back off and start over because you're going to cross those threads. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Let's keep pumping until it starts coming out the front one now. Since it decided to do it backwards on me, here it comes. There we go. Give it another pump, see what happens. Yep, it's coming out real good now. Back plug. Put that in. Clean it up. Okay. The next part is going to be the more messy part. Keep some paper towels right here. I'm going to start turning this out. Thank you, Eric. Tighten that down. Clean up your mess. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, you've lubed, lubed up all your pivot points and stuff like that. You've replaced your gear lube in the lower unit. Um, the old stuff looked pretty good. It didn't look milky at all, which means there was no water in it. So it probably wouldn't have froze anyways. But you know what? It's only, I think about 12, 13, 14 bucks or something like that for brand new lube. And um, just a few, few cents actually for the washers if you need them. So it doesn't hurt to replace it just in case. Um, one of the things that we're going to do next is we're going to take the spark plugs out and we're going to spray a little fogging fluid in there um, just to kind of get that area lubed up and um, keep that from rusting or corroding or anything like that. So here we go, guys. All right, guys, one of the last steps that I do when um, winterizing the outboard is I take the spark plugs out and I spray a little fogging fluid in there. Um, there's other types of fluids as well. Um, use whatever your manual recommends um, and we'll go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the top one off. There, this is a four cylinder. So I got one here, one there, one there, and one there. Make sure you get your proper tools here. Um, socket wrench, um, socket. This one for these particular spark plugs is a five eighths. And I got a swivel, what is it? Extension right there. And then a regular extension right here. Um, to make this work, get these out. So I'm gonna start off with the top one, show you guys that one, and then I'll move down and uh, get the rest of them done. And then um, one other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of stable in the, uh, the fuel filter bowl uh, along the other side. We'll show you guys that, and then we'll pretty much be finished up with this. Sometimes you may need a pair of needle nose pliers though, keep this in mind, to get in there to these tight areas and get these spark plug um, wires off. I do them one at a time, that way I don't get the spark plug wires mixed up. You don't wanna do that. Um, these ones are pretty self-explanatory, but I'm not sure how your outboard looks, so keep that in mind, just do one at a time. Make sure that you inspect 
the spark plugs. Make sure they're not all dirty real bad. Um, this one's not too bad. Um, you could regap them at this point as well. Um, you can clean them up with a rag or whatever. Uh, but this one's not too bad, so we're gonna leave that alone. And what you do is you spray your fog fluid right in the hole. Just like that. Get your spark plug. Put it back on. Make sure you're not stripping these out. Should go in fairly easy all the way till it's tight. So it should turn for a little while before it gets tight. Starting to tighten up right there. Put the wrench on. Tighten it up by hand. Put the end back on the wire and that one's good to go. And we're gonna move on down to the next three. And then uh, we'll be done with this portion of it and then we'll go ahead and put the uh, stay bill in the uh, fuel filter. All right, so last but not least is we're going to put a little bit of stay bill in the fuel filter um, just in case any water builds up in here, um, that stay bill will take care of it. So this particular one has a little nut kind of down here at the bottom. So, I mean, it's not a nut, it's all infused into the plastic here. And that is a 14 millimeter. Okay. Basically, you're leaving the fuel that is in there, in there. And then you put a little bit of stay, uh, stay bill in there. Um, they recommend it's like a, I don't know, I think a half a teaspoon or something like that. No, oh, here it is. Um, I just put enough in there to satisfy me. While you have this off, you can inspect it, inspect the seal and everything. You guys can see that. And you put just a little bit of stable in there. Doesn't need to be much. It's probably good enough right there. And you put this back on. Make sure you're not crossing those threads. You don't want that super tight. Uh, you don't want to strip that out on the bottom. So, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. That's basics of winterizing your boat. Um, you guys can do this yourself, save yourself some money. Um, a lot of people have slightly different ways. Some people have really different ways. Um, if you take it into the shop, they say, do this, do that. Um, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, right now, me and my buddy Eric are comfortable with doing it this way. We've been doing it this way now for roughly about five years, and we haven't had any issues with it. A lot of guys don't even winterize their boat and don't have any issues. But we take precautionary me measures, and we do um, winterize it. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button at the end of the video. Like, share, and comment. I want to know what you guys are thinking. And we'll catch you next time on Fishing Point of View.